Okay, we are live on Facebook. I want to welcome everyone in the house today. We always say no more church as usual. This is what I call Educational Sunday. We're going to be discussing some things. What we're going to do today is going to be a Q&A and comments. Glory to God, a Q&A and comments based on the great seminar we just had. And then we're probably going to uh, relook at some things that I taught last week. But I want the praise team to sing that again. I was up there trying to record that song and put it on uh, the internet. And so when I'm doing that, I try to be quiet so that my voice don't come over on the internet. It was so hard to do that. So let me get my praise on this time because I wanted to shout over there. But I said, I gotta shut up because I don't want my voice on there. So y'all gotta do that again for me, amen. That was powerful. Give the Lord a good hand to praise, amen. Do that one more time. The same one y'all just did. <laughs> Hallelujah.
give the Lord a shout of praise. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Mama, mama, mama. I just had to get my praise on right there. Glory to God. Amen. I'm waiting for my lovely wife. And I thank God for this, uh, what we call uh, Education Sunday. And I want to say that we thank God for the, uh, the Sabbath day. And we keep the Sabbath in place. I love teaching on the Sabbath day and honoring it. But we also worship and give God the thanks and the praise on the first day of the week. I do not believe we're going to hell for coming back to the house of God on the first day of the week. <laughs> and I'm saying that because there's so many people uh, seem like they believe that, but I don't believe that. Now, I do believe you'll get in trouble with God trying to exchange the seventh day for the first day. We shouldn't do that because we keep the seventh day holy and keep it in place. But there is no scripture that say we're going to hell if we come worship on the Sabbath day. I just think that's out of character, kind of silly to me. So I'm saying that uh, for several reasons. But anyway, we're getting ready to get into our uh, education uh, Sunday. And what I want to do is this is going to be Q&A and comments. So I hope we got some mics out there, some clean, sanctified, holy mics. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. And I'm just going to uh, allow y'all to uh, ask any questions or make any comments. And we want to just uh, kind of talk about the great Blacks in the Bible seminar that we had yesterday. I am overwhelmed. I'm still uh, just completely uh, filled up from yesterday. And I thank God for uh, Apostle and Bishop Antonio Palmer and First Lady uh, Barbara Palmer. They blessed my soul. And I told both of them how much we enjoyed it. And I also told uh, First Lady Palmer that that prophecy she gave me was the oh, wow. most powerful and most effective prophecy I have ever received in my entire life and ministry. Amen. And so I am still overwhelmed. Okay. So who want to go first? If, if, if there's any questions or comments, and, uh, and then after we finish, we're going to do a little... Commentary. Oh, it's in that. It's in that. I'm sorry. It's probably in the draw. Either in that draw or this draw. Uh, I'm talking. I'm waiting on my lovely wife for those on Facebook. She'll be here in a few minutes. Uh, we no more church as usual. We just in the presence of the Lord. But who want to go first? Okay, Elder Shalando, uh, get your mic and uh, and you go first. And anybody on Facebook that's joining us, you can. Make your comments online, and if I don't get to them right now, we'll do it later. Amen. But we had an outstanding time on yesterday, and I'm, I, I think that's one of the best seminars I've ever been to in my life in end time ministry. Amen. Go ahead, Elder. Uh, glory to God. I God. Just giving them all the glory. Is your mic on? Yes, sir. Okay. It's on. Uh, just thanking God for yesterday. Yesterday was truly a eye opener. I yes. thank God that he uh, confirms his word uh, because you apostle have been teaching us some of the things that they were teaching yeah. and so I thank God that his word can be confirmed and already established. Yes, exactly. But I did have a question that okay. I didn't ask, but you know, I was, uh, you know how you read things in the Bible and then you kind of go back and sometimes you still don't understand and then you hear it again. Right. But I did have a question <clears throat> to say about the scattering part. Okay. Uh, uh, when they said the Hebrews was not first scattered. And I know you did touch it's on not what? Say that again. Uh, Hebrew, not first scattered. I was just kind of making some little notes, uh, quick notes. But they talked about the Hebrews were not the first ones to be scattered. Oh, right, right. So okay. I just wanted you to kind of expound on that a little for me. I know you've taught on it. Right. And uh, I need to kind of go back and study some more. But if you would just expound on that, because that is kind of an eye opener to know that the Israelites were not were not the only ones that were scattered. That's correct. So because, go ahead. Uh, but it said the Hebrew not first scattered. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did have another question too. Uh, but, okay, so, I'm, I'm going to answer, but I want my wife to go first because she just made a statement that was good. Okay. What you just said. 
All I said was that there were other scatterings. That's what Apostle mm -hmm. Alfonso said. That there were many scatterings. Mm -hmm. um, right. And, and they are correct. And I'm going to expound on a little bit more like you asked me to. They are absolutely correct. Uh, the Hebrews was not the first to be scattered because we talked about uh, the Tower of Babel. They were scattered. Right. So, no, the Hebrews was not the first to be scattered. We also talked about uh, Egypt. And there's one time in Scripture I see where Egypt was scattered, I think, about 40 years. And then he brought them back. Okay, so no, the Hebrews was not the first to be scattered, but there was nobody else that I know that was scattered the same way the Hebrews were scattered. Right. The Hebrews were scattered through slavery and captivity. The, the Tower of Babel people weren't scattered through slavery and captivity. Uh, Egypt wasn't necessarily scattered the same identical way we were scattered. I mean, I believe their scattering was a punishment at the time, but it still wasn't like ours because they came back in 40 years. So the Hebrews were scattered directly through prophecy and through the curse. And that was supposed to be a sign upon us forever. The curses is a sign upon us forever. So we were scattered differently than any other scattered people on the planet. And ours last longer than any other people that were scattered. That makes sense? Okay. All right, any other questions and comments? Go ahead, Sister Tammy. <clears throat> I think, um, I'm when you said that, um, you really wanted to get away from using the word Jew, Okay. Can you expound on um, the reason for right. why you were saying that? And you can interject at any time, too, huh? I 100% agree with him on that. I think that word has been so deceptive, been used so deceptive. Because right now, anytime you say Jew or Jewish people, what comes to your mind? The Ashkenazi people, the Jewish, the Jewish, the white Jewish people, that's what come to your mind. And I think it was a strategy to use that word. And anytime people in society hear that word, those are the people they think about. That's deceiving. Because the word Jew supposedly came from the word Judah. Judah had to do with one of the tribes of Israel. And the word Jew does not cover all to uh, all, all the tribes. It only covers one tribe. You know, uh, the southern tribe. I said like that. It only covers the southern tribe. So it's really kind of deceptive because when people say Jew, they think in all of God's chosen people, and that's just a lie. And I agree with him that when we go back and see everywhere we see Jew in the Bible, you need to think tribe of Judah. You need to think Israelites. We don't need to be thinking Ashkenazi. That was that's that's just been a big deception, and we really do need to straighten that up. Yeah, I love what he was saying yesterday that um, it was the way that it was translated. It was it was never translated to be. It wasn't supposed to be Jew. Right. That was, um, and it's in my notes, which is lost in this drawer. Mm -hmm. But um, it was. Um, a Roman or a Greek translation, I forgot which one he said to look at my notes. Yeah. But, um, I get him, keep talking. It was a Roman or a Greek translation that, um, gone, basically gone awry. And that it was supposed to be translated as Judah. So every time we see Jew, we should, we should know that the translation was Judah. We should be thinking tribe of Judah as in the Israelites, not Jewish people, right. like right. in Ashkenazi. But I promise you, if it's almost every time you hear the word Jew or Jewish, everybody think about the Jewish people, the, the, the white Ashkenazi Jewish people. We do not hate them. We love them. We don't have a problem. I'm just saying there's a problem with how that, the thinking is behind that word Jew. Yeah. 
It's a big problem, and it literally has become a lie. Yeah, it, it almost, in it almost reminded me of a, a slang, the way he um, explained it, and almost reminded me that it was sort of a slang. Mm -hmm. yeah. And see, like, uh, to go a little bit further back, like, in Bible days, it was it wasn't Jew. It, the tribe wasn't even called Judah. It was called Yahudi, mm -hmm. Yahuda, Yahudim, because there was no J at that time. We only say Judah now because of the creation of the J. And I don't have a problem with J. I don't have a problem saying Judah, and surely don't have a problem saying Jesus, because I know we're talking about Yahshua. Okay, so I don't have a problem with the word J. I'm just saying, that's in its original form. Form it really wasn't Judah. Yeah. Right. It was Yahuda. That makes sense. Okay. Go ahead, Elder. Okay. I'm sorry. I have one more question. Uh, I, I noticed in, in uh, just the Bible that when they were talking about this on yesterday, and I thought I heard them say that. All he grew them on me saved. Yes. And then he came and said only one third. And that yes. kind of confused me a little bit. Right. He came out of Zechariah. Okay. He did write that down. 39 and, and, right. So um, let me try to answer it the best way I can. And and then and let me exp and I'm gonna try to explain to you what I see in that because the scripture does say in uh in uh Romans that uh, and all Israel shall be saved. Okay, but now watch this. Here's what I see. Now y'all do know when I'm teaching and preaching my conviction, I'm teaching and preaching my conviction. Right. And I'm convinced in what I teach and preach. However, if someone can give me scripture in context yes. to challenge what I believe, I will humble myself and come back and look at it. And when I teach, I'm not forcing anything on anybody. And I teach you guys this all the time, right or wrong. And so I'm saying this for those on the, on the Facebook that I am very adamant about what I teach, but I'm not so adamant like I know everything. Right. And when I when I teach, I'm not teaching to convince anybody. I'm teaching my conviction that the Most High has given me. And if you can give me scripture to prove that they're wrong, I'm gonna reconsider it. Thus far, I haven't received any. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Okay, but back to, okay, get that, what we're dealing with again, because I kind of went off on okay. the tent. Uh, All Israel shall be saved, right? Mm -hmm. Well, he said, he, he and then a third going to be. Yeah. Then he talked about a third. Right, okay, but let me get back to that. I just had to put that out there as a disclaimer. <laughs> okay, all, this is what I see based on my study in the word of God. All Israel shall be saved. That just simply means that when the Messiah returned, he promised that the people he scattered in all the nations, he will regather them. That don't mean they say they're going into the kingdom in eternity. Because we do see in scripture that all of them gonna be saved from these nations, but a bunch of them gonna be killed and, and, and our rebels gonna be cast out among them. That could be part of that period. So that makes, it made perfect sense to me because I have an understanding of what he was saying. But yeah, that don't mean he ain't going to kill a bunch of them. Okay, types and shadows, what has been will be. When he brought them out of Egypt, from under Pharaoh, he, all of them were saved. He still brought a bunch of them out there and killed them. Because of their, their stiff neck and rebellion, didn't it? So that, that's going to happen again. What has been will be. That makes sense? Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so, uh, <clears throat> so, Apostle, what you're pretty much saying is um, that scripture that says, when the Father come, how he finds you, pretty much. Yeah. That's how. Yeah. That's why, how that's why I would advise anybody. See, because a lot of, uh, I, you know, since, since I've been in this awakening, I've, heard, uh, I've been listening to a lot of Hebrews, a lot of black people. They're the real Hebrews of the scriptures. And I hear a lot of them saying that when he bring us into the wilderness, that we'll be brought into the bond of the covenant. That is true. There are scriptures that say that. 
But that's not a guarantee for these cussing Hebrews, these people living uh -huh. in sin. If they think when Christ comes that they're going to automatically just go into the bond of the covenant and ain't got it right now, I, I, would, I ain't going to take that chance. You need to be ready. The Bible said, be ye also ready. Because you don't know the day nor the hour when he come. I would not trust that talking about he going to bring me in the bond of the covenant and live like the devil here. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense? I think we better get it right, right now, while we got a chance, with the help of the Most High and His and His Spirit, and we safe. <laughs> I don't think nobody's safe living crazy now, and when Messiah come, thinking they're gonna go into right, right. eternity with Him. I just think that's that's. I don't see no scripture that support that. Come on. Um. Okay. So I'm trying to. Raise this question right, or if I heard it right. I okay. know when you were teaching us about Esau and the Edomites. Okay, mm -hmm. come on. We've always associated it, you know, with European people, white right. people. Right. But I know when he was, um, when they were showing the PowerPoint and uh, uh, about the the people who were red skinned, or mm -hmm. he called them red bone. So funny. <laughs> was, um, and they, I know at one point, um. I don't know the other guy that I was like, I don't, I don't remember his name. Oh. Rabbi Randy. Rabbi, 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 Rabbi. Yeah. He did an excellent job. Yeah. Too. Yeah. But when yeah. he was preaching also, um, he was saying that Ed uh, Edomites, calling Edomites white people is a lie. Mm -hmm. So I just wondered, like, um, okay, well then, I know, cause I, feel, I think what we've learned is that Edomites were, are white right, people. Right, I thought uh, that's what they're one. saying is that yeah. it's, they're not white yeah. people, so I'm kind of that's a that's a good question, Minister Jessica, and I'm glad it's, it it was brought up so that we can discuss it. Okay, I I completely agree that Esau was a black man, mm -hmm. but I also completely agree that Esau mixed with white people too. Mm -hmm. So there are some white people with with uh with that spirit of Esau in them because he did mix. I'm not saying every single European is Esau, and no, Esau was not white. Esau was a black man, but Esau mixed with a lot of nations. And so it's really yes and no. That makes sense? Yeah, that's the point. That so, it's, so it's yes that some white people have been mixed with Esau, because right. we saw where they mixed with Adumian. Well, I do, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's, I mean, they mixed with the Romans is what I'm saying. Yes, they did. Yeah. And then they even mixed even more. Yeah, more uh, so. In Europe. In right. um, Europe and in, in Russia. And this is through history mm -hmm. um, that you, you see that mix. So we know that they, that's why Edumia and mm -hmm. Edom just couldn't stand alone by itself now. It's kind of like it is here. Right. But what they did was mix. Right. So they did mix with other races. And, and But I think the way the camps presented, like every single white person is Esau, that's not true. That makes sense, Minister Jessica? Yes, yes sir. Yes, yeah. Sir. So. So, <clears throat> even so, the scripture says that we're not to hate um, the Anidomite. An Edomite. An Edomite. Yeah. Because they're brother. He's your brother. Yeah. So originally, Esau was, was black. He's not white, he was black. But he sort of did his mixing around on some people too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I could see that because they came. <clears throat> Can somebody find that scripture for me in Hebrews that talks about um, uh, Esau was a fornicator and uh, as Esau was defiled? Can you find that for me? Uh, uh, while we talk and go ahead, so, <clears throat> if, you, if you can find it in Hebrew or something. If you think about it, yes, they were black because the world was populated with the Lord and the Son. Huh? If you think about it, yes, the Edomites uh, were black because they. Yeah, he was, he's a black man. He's right, not, he, wasn't, he wasn't originally. However, yeah. when they. Is it true that when the further they went north, the lighter their skin became. I've heard that. I don't. I don't know about Esau himself uh, turning white, but I do know he mixed with white people. Yeah. 
But I, I think it is gross error to go around and say every single white person or European is the Esau. I think that's gross error. But it's also error if we say Esau didn't mix with them at uh, some point, some of them at some point. So I, I kind of I kind of stand with what we've already established, Minister Jessica. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some of them are mixed with Esau. Does that make sense with everybody? Anybody found that scripture? What did it say? Read it. Read it. Uh. Okay. What is it, Christian? Let's look at that. Hebrews 12, verse 16. All right. Let's look at this that real, real closely. Uh, okay, let's back up to verse 15. Watch this. Looking diligently, least any man fail of the grace of God. Looking diligently, if what? Any man. So any man could fall in this trap. Is what he's saying, right? That's what he's establishing. Okay, so looking diligently, least any man. Not, not just a black man, not just a white man, not just a uh, Chinese man. Any man. Y'all got that point? Anybody. Any man. Look at diligently, diligently, least any man fail of the grace of God. Least any root of bitterness springing up trouble you. And thereby many be defiled. Anybody can be defiled. Let's keep, now let's read the other verse in context. Least there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau. Esau was a profane and a, a profane person and he was a fornicator. He went around spreading his seed. Right. Not only his natural seed, but he went around spreading who he was spiritually. His personality is in people, can get in people. His, his spirit can get in people. And even his seed was mixed with other people. And this can happen to who? Any man. Is that what the scriptures say? Okay. So it says, um, least, any, least there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for a morsel of meat sold his birthright. For you know how that afterwards, when he would have inherited a blessing, he was rejected. Esau is rejected by God. I don't care if it's Esau, the black man, or Esau seed and a white man. Come on now. I don't care if Esau's spirit get in a Chinese. You reject it if you don't repent. Well, first of all, Bible said that Esau didn't find no repentance. So don't let Esau get in you. <laughs> Thank you. Don't let his spirit, his character, nor his seed get in you. Because right. you, anybody can be defiled. Is that what the scriptures say? And we know Esau defiled a lot of people. Okay? So it says, uh, uh, For you know how that afterwards when he would have inherited a blessing... He was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Esau's natural seed of being a fornicator naturally, and Esau's spiritual seed as his personality getting in other people, dangerous. And anybody can be defiled with Esau. That make sense? So yeah, there are awesome other races that's Esau. <laughs> okay. All right. Anything else? Since my question was answered, 
Um, I'm noticing the scattering was seemed to be one of God's areas in dealing with a degree of sin. Meaning, you know, you, 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 we, we have noticed that when there was five scatterings of the Hebrews at different times, uh, the, the five uh, were, were scattered. And, um, and Judah being the last of the five categories that he got, I mean, uh, scatterings that he gave. And then we have already talked about how the sin was greater. Because as you were saying earlier about the scattering at Babylon or the scattering um, of Egypt, mm -hmm. they weren't as great as Judah because of the degree of sin. Oh, I, I think I see where you're going. In other words, uh, Judah's sin was so deep that they were scattered the farthest and the longest. Wow. Yes. Yeah, so no, I don't I don't see no scattering like Judah. I think Judah's scattering is even different from any, or any of the other Hebrews scattering. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah, I think Jude, Judah's sin was, was great. Yeah. And they really offended God, and their scattering was unlike any. Right, and, and I also was seeing... The, as, as you know, from the first scatter, second scatter, the five that he gave, the Judah being the last one, these scatterings happened before Judah got scattered. There was mercy even there, too, to kind of warn Judah. <laughs> you know, first, sin was concerned. Mm -hmm. These scatterings were examples before it got to Judah. I think there's, there's an example is this chastening too. And it's a chastening. <laughs> and God, God has used that in in, in, in my way. That was something God yeah, they, did they, in scattering. I'm listening to you, Sister yeah, Trina, no, but no, I was no, also no, yeah, I was also talking to my wife too. So what you what you just said? Get your mic. Get your mic. I was asking Judah was scattered before. They were led into captivity into Babylon, so that's a form of scouting, scattering. But I think this last time, through worldwide uh, scattering and slavery, was the, was the greatest. Yeah, and, and at seventy A.D. Well, yeah, that's that that's what good. that's where their their uh, punishment really took off at because that was that was a scattering. Yeah, that Jesus prophesied that these be the days of vengeance that. And I'm talking about not the vengeance of wrath of God upon the nations that persecuted Judah. This was vengeance for Israel for breaking the covenant. So Jesus said, these be the days of vengeance when all things that are written shall be fulfilled. He was talking about Moses said to the Israelites that you have angered him and in his anger, he's going to deal with you. That's This is the vengeance Jesus was talking about. And... Uh, so, yeah. Okay, anything else? Yeah, um, with Edomites. Okay. You know, being not the Edomites, when, when he was saying that they weren't white. Now, when we were taught, when we were studying the Edomites about being God's enemies. Mm -hmm. So now being said that the Edomites can be any man, he sure okay, can. Okay. He can get in you. <laughs> so, he can get in you naturally and spiritually. <laughs> um, and 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 so that being said, therefore, any man can be of God's enemies. Sure can. Any and sinner. These 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 Edomites are can be. Um, I'm safe, and I'm asking at the same time to say I believe. Um, that the Edomites, being white or black, depending on what's what, or maybe if they're white, that they're both sides of Edomite. Well, when you say if they're white, though, let's make it clear if, that it, they, okay, they were was, black people, if it was a black but, man. but their character and their seed got in other people. Okay, so... What I'm asking is, 
the Edomite, mm -hmm. as we were just talking about, because Esau's name was called Edom because he was faint and sold his mm -hmm. uh, thing, and therefore he was called his birthright. Him. Right. <clears throat> so, but being that we were just talking about any man can be God's enemy, mm -hmm. which we talked about Edomites being God's enemies, and these were the people that God was going to wipe off the face of the earth and we were not going to see them again. Right, and he, he hadn't, to my knowledge, he hadn't done that yet, but that's coming. Right. Mm -hmm. So, that you don't want to be numbered with them. You sure don't. So. Because God ain't going to care what color he is when he correct. quit white mic. He's going to wipe that seed Edomite, out, period. I just think that that question came up, that thing came up because the camps are always running around talking about all white people are Edomites, but that's not, that's not true in that sense. And that's what I'm saying because that because there's a different type of people that can come and you can be numbered with them of us. Mm -hmm. If we get that Esau spirit or what have you in us and we can be numbered with those Emites. Yep. Okay. So it's safe to say even of our own and maybe that's where the third comes in. You know, even of our own being God's enemies you know, with that all Israel going to be saved thing. Yeah, and, and everybody understand that all Israel going to be saved from what I see. All Israel going to be saved from this scattering. He's going to gather all the ones he scattered because he made a promise for his namesake. Yeah, he's going to save them all. But according to what I see is when he take them in the wilderness, I'm on in trouble. Okay. Yes. Because okay. he said he's going to get the rebels from among them. Okay. So they all were saved, but who was these that he got from among us in the wilderness? Mm -hmm. So that all saved don't mean you going into eternity and you all right. Yeah. Because under the Israelites went in the wilderness. Yeah, the, the, well, the, the, uh, the uh, Hebrews, his elect, but I am not saying that uh, some of those in Grafton Inn didn't get taken also. Okay. Yeah. yeah. One thing that's so true. God knows our heart. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's how he judges, I would think. That right. He judges. You know, if a person thinks that they going to try to get over on God, they can <laughs> forget that. You can forget he it. Knows what the heart, he knows what you're thinking in your heart. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Let me, let me read this since we're still talking about this and kind of still on Esau. Malachi 1, verse 1. <clears throat> Excuse me. Malachi 1 verse 1 it says the burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi I have loved you saith the Lord yet you say wherein have you loved us this is Israel questioning the father right. was then now here watch what the father said in the scripture was not Esau Jacob's brother saith the Lord Yet I loved Jacob and I hated Esau. He said, I'm proving to you, I love you and I hate Esau. But now watch this. <clears throat> uh, I have hated Esau and laid his mountain and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. He done laid him waste for the dragon of the wilderness, but watch this. Whereas Edom said, watch Edom, watch Esau, he gonna talk. Yeah. Edom said, we are impoverished, but we will return. Still this spirit is spreading his, its character around in people. Yeah. Yeah. God done laid him waste, but he said, we will return. Why? Because he was a fornicator and he mixed with other people. But it says, and I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom said, we are impoverished, but we will return and rebuild the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they, they shall build, but I will throw down. And they shall call them the border of wickedness. And the people against whom the Lord has indignation forever. God don't like Esau. At all. And Esau done, 
you know what? The wicked is Esau also. Because that wicked character of Esau got in many races. And all wicked going to be destroyed. That makes sense? That, that makes sense, Brother Melvin? Okay. <laughs> I just like to hear from Brother Melvin. <laughs> He's a man of wisdom. <laughs> Anybody else? Go ahead, Brother Melvin. So I like the uh, how they went with slavery, and I just wanted to clarify from my understanding. Slavery started for the Israelites due to the people in Portugal not wanting to work, basically, correct? I, I heard him say that. Some of that was kind of uh, not new because I've heard it before, but they brought more clarity to it. Okay. But, yeah, the thing that happened in Portugal, you know, it... The way they explained it, I, I, I see that he was right about that. Mm -hmm. okay. And so, and then it started based on what happened there. But the reason it started was because it was prophesied upon us, on us no matter what started it. Okay. And to take that going backwards a little further. Okay. The... Tribulations for the Israelites, and to make clarity on that, because Apostle uh, Palmer had made a comment uh, when he was talking about Ham, saying that uh, Noah didn't curse Ham, he cursed Canaan. Right, that's correct. And, but also, we have the Esau and Jacob, and then we have the Israelites disobeying God. So, I guess what I'm asking is, what one of which which one of those instances was the turning event for us being going through these tribulations as we going through now? Oh well, the whole t turning point of us as a people going through these tribulations started back with Moses, when Moses said, "You are stiff-necked people, and I know when I die, y'all gonna get in the land and break God's covenant." And when they broke God's covenant, that really that started, that started it. All this other stuff is just additions. But what started it is breaking the covenant, period. Our ancestors broke the covenant. That started the whole kid caboodle. Yeah, so no matter how long it took, or no matter what it took to do it, Portugal or anything, it started way back then. Breaking the covenant. Anything else? I have a thing about Nimrod when he was talking about Mm -hmm. um, Tammy, look and see if there's anything on any courses. Nisha, Nisha working. Oh, she she what? She's working. She's not sending us any questions. Oh, okay. So there's no question. Okay, good. We must be doing a good job. <laughs> Go ahead. That, that Nimrod, um, because I know we have heard and learned somewhat of the paganism coming mm -hmm. from Nimrod, and come to find out, Nimrod. From what I heard yesterday, correctly, uh, that Nimrod was a great king. Is that he was a great king, and that's where uh, you know the riches and, and and the power and stuff began with Nimrod. Yeah, I want to I want to add that Nimrod was great at evil. Okay, he was really great. You're right. He was great at evil. <laughs> so Nimrod. We're safe to say, continue to believe as we have been taught concerning Nimrod uh, turning the, the, the profaning of the convocation of the Sabbath days to these holidays and stuff that the world has gotten today? I think the spirit of Nimrod kind of helped usher that in. Okay. Yeah. But I, I, I think we can trace the change in the, the Sabbath day for the first day even back to the Romans. I think they were the ones that really did that. And I think that's wrong. You cannot change God's Sabbath day. You cannot. We got to keep, and I know you believe that. I'm just saying this for the record's sake. People that try to uh, change the Sabbath for the first day, you cannot do that. And you're in trouble changing that with God. But on the other hand, I want to say, we're not changing anything. We honor the Sabbath just like the fourth commandment say. But 
to tell me we're going to hell because we sat here talking about how blessed we were yesterday, that's pretty silly. <laughs> you know? Right. No, you can come to the temple daily. The Bible said it was in the temple daily. But just because you're in the temple daily don't give you a right to change the Sabbath day. That makes sense? Okay, because I hear a lot of teaching out there and people, uh, I hear people teaching that folks that go to church on Sunday going to hell. That's a lie. That's just simply a lie. Now you can end up in hell trying to change the Sabbath from where God put it. But you're not going to hell because you go, you know, you end up in church on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or first day, second day, third day. Because these days are pagan. Day, days of the week are pagan, come from, from pagan names. Mm -hmm. But a first day, second day, third day, fourth day, you can bless God any day you want. But you cannot change the Sabbath. Okay. Anything else? <clears throat> I have a question on my Okay. Hanisha asked. She said one of the ministers mentioned that we aren't going to go through tribulation of God's wrath. When he said it, it seemed like he put it in the same category. She said, Sunday, if I'm at, if I'm not mistaken, you preached on how the four hundred years was our tribulation. But we won't go through the wrath of God. Can you clarify this? Yeah. I think anytime we're talking about tribulation, like watch this. The wrath of God is a tribulation for somebody. Okay. Y'all follow me? Yeah. It is going to be a trial for somebody. But when we're talking about tribulation, the great tribulation, and when we're talking about tribulation or the great tribulation, and when we're talking about the wrath of God, I think we got to distinguish them things because there's two different things the Bible talks about. Yeah. Uh -huh. The wrath of God is the day of the Lord, the day of vengeance, when he going to punish wickedness and punish those who punished Israel. That's the wrath of the Lord. We are not appointed for wrath, to wrath. <laughs> but some people, when they teach it, they call in the wrath of God tribulations. That's, I don't think that's what they did. But some people, when they teach in that, they are, they are mixing the wrath of God up and the, they are mixing the wrath of God and the tribulations up. And you can't jumble that up. You've got to distinguish them two or you're going to be screwed up somewhere according to Scripture. Now, I honestly believe that the tribulation and the great tribulation for Israel has been happening a long time. And when, when this tribulation is finished, there is no seven more years of wrath poured out on Israel. It ain't there. It ain't them getting ready to go through another tribulation or another scattering. I don't believe that. I don't see that. I used to kind of see that and, and used to teach some of that stuff. Not anymore. Okay? I honestly, personally, this is just me. Okay? I honestly, personally, personally believe we are in a t times of judgment. And after judgment in the nations, that God is judging the nations, after judgment, only other thing I see coming is the wrath of God to the nations. And, that, and before that happened, he takes his people out. And I see where they're going to go to the wilderness. I was going to teach on that today, but I figured that since we were so overwhelmed with some wonderful truth from yesterday, I didn't want to take all no further just yet. So we'll get into that later. I just wanted to make sure we um, uh, digest everything we heard yesterday because everything was, was awesome. It was awesome. And so I hope I answered that. Anytime we study and talking, we better distinguish the wrath of God from the tribulation. And I do not believe that we got Israel got to go through an, Israel in being tribulation and great tribulation. And I and again, I personally believe in what I see in scriptures. We all are in a moment of judgment falling on the nations now. And after this, we'll come out with great substance whenever that is. And then the wrath of God will be poured out. If you look, what has been will be. 
If you look back at the uh, Pharaoh's kingdom when he had the Israelites in, in slavery and in bondage, all right, uh, and God sent Moses to tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Okay, Pharaoh was stubborn. So judgments, several judgments was poured out on Egypt while Israel was still there. Okay. Before he brought them out. I believe that's where we are right now. Yeah. Judgments being poured out. But after judgment, the wrath of God. And Israel, which I believe is the true church, with Gentiles engrafted in, is not appointed to the wrath of God. Clear as day in the Bible. Now, whether somebody believe me or not, that's just confident to know that I'm not appointed under wrath. <laughs> you know, and even if you go through it, at least you got a little encouragement before you went through it. <laughs> I don't see us going through the wrath of God. And I believe we're in a moment of judgments, however long that, that's going to be. And I believe that changed after that, after that 400 years. And I know a lot of people have an issue with that 400 years. I don't. I don't. I believe that was a sign. And I believe that it, that was a perfect sign that we are the Hebrews. It was, a, it was a, a sign and a wonder. And after that 400 years was completed and the nations, many nations, many people confirmed it. The UN confirmed it. Ghana, I think, did a year return confirming it. Uh, the America, Trump confirmed it. I don't know any other people was confirmed with 400 years of persecution, suffering, and slavery. I don't, I don't know any. And you can't say, use that for the 430 years. 430 years is not 400 years. 430 years is 430 years. 400 years is 400 years. You can't say they're the same. So I said a lot, but anyway, I hope I made sense. Okay. Can you kind of... Oh, did I answer uh, Nisha's question? Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. Can you kind of expound or um, give us your eye view or witness view of when he was talking about the types of people that were going to be when Messiah returns? I think I missed one, but there were the list was the grafted believers, the reprobate, the resistors, and ethnic Israel. I think I'm missing one, though. It was just four? Okay. I, well, the only, the only um, thing I can say about that is, let's just go back and hear it again, but when he said it and the way he said it, I agree. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I don't know if I can do much more comment on it other than what was stated, because okay. those types of people will be here. All of them you just call out will be here. Okay. And those are the ones he will deal with. You know, so it's really kind of self-explanatory. So are they, are, is he dealing with them or these are the kinds that when, when everything's over with, he's going to continue to, is this the one who's going to be ruling over, like the resistors or? Oh, I, okay, I think I kind of see what you're saying. That's going to be like when we're in the thousand year reign of Christ. Okay. There's going to still be people in flesh and blood flesh and blood bodies. Okay. But they're gonna be I believe they're gonna be people in flesh and bone bodies with glorified bodies helping to rule and reign with Christ. Okay, but they're gonna be people still here having children because the Bible says a child would die at a hundred. So that gonna go on. So since you're gonna have flesh and blood here, you're gonna still have flesh and blood want their own way. These some of these people ain't gonna like the rule of Christ, but that's why the Bible said we're gonna rule with Christ with a rod of iron. They're gonna be you gonna you gonna do right. You're gonna be forced to do right. You ain't gonna be able to get away with nothing. Okay. So yeah, it's gonna be some resistance to the will of God. Because after that thousand years, when Satan is loose for a short time, those same people in their heart that really resisted the rule of they 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 obeyed the rule of Christ because they had to, but they really didn't like it. Though I believe those are the people Satan gonna go out and deceive and 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 uh, okay. And all of them going to lose out with God in the end. So, yeah, that's going to be some resistance that we going to rule over. Because okay. everybody ain't going to like our rule. Nope. <laughs> they all Christ rule. Our ruling with Christ. All right. Okay. It, 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 huh? Okay. 
budget for mom. <laughs> um, and I believe uh, the one third Israel, uh, Israelites, that's who he was talking about that would remain uh, here during the 1,000 reign. Mm -hmm. uh, because I remember them saying that there will be one third that are left uh, to to experience the uh, the wrath, I want to say. Mm -hmm. and I, I wrote it down in my notes, but I remember him saying that. Because right. I remember someone mentioned, I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear, I didn't see who it was. They mentioned a the one third Israelite, and who were that, who are those? But I remember him saying right. that. Right. I remember him saying that too. And uh, and to be honest with you, there there's a probably, probably about three or four different things they brought up that I thought they did an excellent job on. Yeah. My spirit bore witness with it, but I can't tell you I'm educated on it. I can't tell you, I, I know it for a fact. But when they said it, I knew my spirit bore witness. And But I, I can't, I ain't, I'm no authority on some of those things. And it's amazing that they, they reference a lot I, of I don't history. know it all. Go ahead. Um, with the Ross child and that, and the, um, the, because they are a prominent wealthy family of the world, mm -hmm. along with the, uh, I think we found two other, Melvin and I, we was researching mm -hmm. yesterday, um, that deals with the financial bank and how that- You song, found two others? It was two others. Who, who? Uh, well, I know the other one, the Rockefeller. Rockefellers. And oh, really? Are they Jewish? Yeah. Are they Jewish, maybe the Rockefellers? I, mean, I need to find out if they're Jewish. And I know they also- I'm talking about uh, Ashkenazi Jewish. Jewish. <laughs> Into that one world order where all of them will dominate the money and all kind of come back to the one one religion, one nation, one money. Mm -hmm. And there's a, a movie left behind that really referenced everything they pretty much was talking about mm -hmm. uh, on yesterday. Right. I'm glad you brought that up because I thought that was so interesting how we see money. That scripture that said the love of money is the root of all evil, we saw that when he was explaining that. That's the motivation behind all these wars and everything else in control of the world. The love of money. Not money, but the love of money is the root of all evil. I thought they did an excellent job laying that out. I'm glad you brought that up. But I'd like to know if those other people y'all found is Jewish, if y'all ever find out anything on that. All right. Okay, if, if we can move, if we got anything else, if not, we're going to kind of move on. I want to kind of go back and touch on something I shared last week. Uh, and I taught the lesson on examining the prophecy concerning the 70 weeks of Daniel. Okay, y'all remember when I taught that? And I, I think I did an online lesson too where I sat down and tried to clarify some things. But let's go to Daniel. Now I'm just doing a little review. Daniel chapter 9. And I think it's all. Uh, okay, uh, start at verse 25. Okay. And I'm going to just reiterate what, where I stand and what I've taught and what I believe. And like I said, I, I commend this to you. I commend what I'm saying to your own conscience. Y'all know what I mean by when, when I say I commend this to your own conscience? Because you have to look inside and see if what the Holy Ghost said to you. And if the Holy Ghost not bearing witness to you, then of course don't receive something. From, I wouldn't receive nothing from anybody that my spirit don't bear witness with. If your spirit don't bear witness uh, with what you hear, you should put it on the shelf. Or you should go be a good Berean and search it out for yourself. Therefore, you'll never be deceived by a preacher. Is you have an anointing if you if you're born of his spirit. You have an anointing according to 1 John 2.27 that teaches you all things and it is true. And you need not that any man should teach you. You're not dependent upon a preacher. I don't care how intelligent the preacher is, how much the preacher knows, and that includes me. You're not you're not living by my knowledge. Now my now my teaching may enhance you and your study, but you're not dependent upon me. 
Ain't nobody going to get before the Most High on Judgment Day and say, Apostle deceived me. Uh-uh, I told y'all not to be deceived because I told you to follow your own spirit and study for yourself. <laughs> I don't believe nobody should come up before the judgment talking about this preacher deceived me. No, you deceive yourself by not studying and not listening to the Ruach inside of you. That's where I stand. But, okay, here's my conviction. Here's where I stand, and I haven't changed them since I taught this. And if anybody can show me scripture in context, then I'll, I'll take them in consideration. Uh, <clears throat> Daniel 9, verse 25. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem. Okay, I don't know if y'all understand what this said, but I commented on it last week. I'm going to comment again. This was the, the restoring of the streets and the walls in Jerusalem during Daniel's day. Okay? Because what happened is they had went into captivity in Babylon and the streets and the wall in, the, in Jerusalem had was in ruin. So it needed to be restored. So Nehemiah and Ezra were some of the leaders who helped to restore Jerusalem in Daniel's day when he was alive. So that's what this is talking about here when it says from the going forth of the commandment to restore. There was a king who gave a commandment that they can go back and restore Jerusalem. So, the, so what the prophecy is saying, okay, you're going to have 70 weeks until Messiah get here. And it's going to be 400, 70 weeks is 490 years because we're talking about weeks of years, not weeks of days. So that 70 week prophecy was dealing with 70 weeks before Messiah would arrive. Okay? And he said, the way, way you're going to start counting 70 weeks, you're going to start counting from the day the commandment is given to restore Jerusalem. So the clock started then, counting 490 years. Those Israelites knew because many of them, when that 490 years was up, the people who was living in that day, they was looking for Messiah. They, some of them knew, yeah. And some of them knew it's time for him to arrive. How did they, how did they know that? Because they knew they, it's passed down through the generation that the count started when a commandment was given to restore the walls and the streets in Jerusalem during Daniel's day. So apparently the Hebrews had been keeping up with that down through the years and they knew just about the time when it was time for Messiah to show up. So, so from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem until unto Messiah the prince now notice it says Messiah the prince. In this chapter some, pe some people took this chapter right here in this next verse and said the prince right here was the Antichrist. It ain't there. This prince is Messiah. This is Messiah the prince. And the next verse is still talking about Messiah the prince. But where this Antichrist teaching, and I'm not saying that's not, I'm not saying, I'm not blocked, uh, ignoring the fact that there's an Antichrist person coming. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that ain't what that scripture said now. This scripture talking about Messiah the Prince. But people have taken these two scriptures and preached the Antichrist coming, making a seven year agreement with Israel. And in the in after three and a year, three and a half years, he's gonna go in the temple and he's gonna break it and declare he's God. That ain't in that scripture. You don't have to find you don't have to find some other scriptures to teach that. Because this ain't what that said. That's my defense. Okay? <clears throat> so this scripture is talking about. Uh, the Messiah, the Prince, <clears throat> and it said, shall be 70 weeks. He said, it's going to be 70 weeks of years before Messiah get here, which is 490 years. And when Messiah get here, Messiah going to get here right at the time that 490 years is, is, is in play. Now, the, the, the seven weeks the seven weeks, the seven years started when Messiah was anointed when he was baptized by John. And 
we believe and know that his ministry lasted how long? Three and a half years. Three and a half years, Messiah confirmed the covenant with many. And in the middle of the week, in the middle of the seven years, he was cut off, but not for himself. So when Messiah come back, it's only three and a half more years to finish that 70 week of Daniel. And so all these scholars talking about seven years of tribulation or seven years of wrath, find that for me, please, and show me scriptures that say that. Don't give me some theory for finding. All I see is three and a half more years of that 70th week because Messiah was cut off in the middle of that 70th week. Because the 70th week brought us to Messiah. Period. They ain't, you can't you can't change that and you can't change what Daniel said. That makes sense. I hope it makes sense. Let me go to the next verse. It says, "And three score and two weeks shall huh? oh yeah I'm sorry. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off." <clears throat> and he basically talking about the middle of the of the middle of the week. What week? That seventieth week. It ain't for 70 weeks he prophesied. So if you're going to add another seven, it's go, if you're going to add another seven weeks, then you actually talking about seven plus three and a half. <laughs> you add some. <laughs> it ain't but 70 weeks. Messiah was anointed and took up or uh, ate up three and a half of, uh, years of that week when he was confirming the covenant with many. Yeah. And when he come back and and take the uh, the uh, his people into the wilderness, he dealing with them three and a half years, bringing many of them in the bond of the covenant, that completes the 70th week. So yes, it was a time, the time stopped. The clock on the 70th week stopped in the middle of the week. It's going to start back when Messiah returned. That's what I see and that's where I stand. I ain't trying to convince nobody. But, uh, I mean, you can ask me any question you like, you know, but that's where I stand. And so it says, <clears throat> And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come. It didn't say the prince, the Antichrist going to come. There is an Antichrist coming. That ain't what this scripture said. Okay. This, this scripture says, because this is the scripture they get that seven year tribulation and the Antichrist breaking the covenant in the middle of the week. That's where they get this from. That ain't what that scripture said. This scripture said, uh, <clears throat> and after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off and not for himself. And the people of the prince, not the prince, the people of the prince, these people that rule by a prince, which is a prince of the power of the air, Anti, which, which is an antichrist spirit. Antichrist has always been here because there's many antichrists, but we ain't talking about the person antichrist here. The people of the prince is the ones that's coming to do this dirt. And I believe that was the Romans who came and destroyed uh, the temple in 70 AD. That's where I stand. I do. I used to preach that other side. It used to preach that this was the Antichrist, not no more, but that ain't what that say. Y'all see an Antichrist in these two scriptures? I was talking about Christ. It's talking about Christ and the people of the prince. That's the only two things he brought up in these scriptures. And the people of the prince is not the prince that's coming. Okay? All right. So anyway, having said that, uh, I want to close with... Uh, Jeremiah chapter 30 because I want to kind of read through this again because y'all know last week when I was examining the 70 week of Daniel <clears throat> I also said that Jacob's trouble is not Jacob going through another set of troubles <laughs> that's just false and people don't use the term Jacob's trouble to justify seven years of the Israel going back through another seven years of tribulation after the, after the all the hell they done been through. And my point is, 
This scripture right here that talks about Jacob's trouble didn't say nothing like that. So what I'm doing is going back, looking at some of these doctrines, these famous doctrines, and saying these doctrines, the scriptures that they started these doctrines from, never said what they said they was teaching. All right? Because uh, let's go read it. Let's, let's start from anything. Okay. I, have I made sense? Am I making sense? Okay. I'm making sense to myself, but I hope I'm making sense to y'all that's what I'm asking. All right, so Je Jeremiah, let's just read Jeremiah. Jeremiah 30, verse 1. And I'm going to show you in several places in this chapter that Jacob's trouble don't mean Jacob finna go back through another set of troubles. That's what I'm setting out to prove based on the context of this chapter, okay? All right, so Je uh, Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 1. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write these, write thee all the, no, let me stop. Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. Verse 3. For lo, the days come. All right, he's talking about days that's coming. Said the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people, Israel and Judah. What is he talking about there? He's talking about a day when he bring all of the Israelites back together and he's going to make them all one in one nation again. He's talking about when he gathered them from all the scattered nations on the planet. That's what that verse is saying. And if anybody disagree with me, you can stop me and, and, and uh, let, me, let me know that. Well, I don't see that, Apostle. But that's what that scripture said. All right? So it said, The days <clears throat> come, said the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah. All right? Said the Lord. And I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. This is when he bring us from the nations with the ultimate purpose of bringing us back to our own land. And from there, we, we, should, we shall dwell safely. Okay. This is what this scripture is talking about. Now, let's keep going. Because <clears throat> he said they will possess it. Mm -hmm. Verse 4. And these are the words that the Lord spake concerning Israel. This is Israel. And concerning Judah. That's the southern tribe and the northern tribe. For thus said the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling of fear and not of peace. Okay, so some, the prophet is saying, I, I'm, I'm hearing something that ain't nice. That's what this scripture said. Can y'all see that? All right, let me read it again. We have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. This ain't nice. Whatever he's hearing here ain't nice. All right? Good, let's keep reading. But it don't mean this is for Jacob. Jacob is a glorious time for Jacob or the 12 tribes because this is the time he bring them all back to make them one and bring them in. All right? We're just keeping everything in context. All right? Verse 6. Ask ye now and see whether a man doeth travail with child. Now he's describing what he just heard that don't sound good. He said, I heard a voice of trembling, fear, and something, and something that ain't peaceful. All right. Now in the next verse, he continued to describe what he heard. Ask ye now and see whether a man do it travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man? Uh, wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness? Why in the world I'm seeing this? I just heard something. That's not good. Now I'm seeing, why am I seeing everybody pale? This ain't Jacob. This is not the Israelites turning pale. This is the Gentiles because the day of vengeance has come. Is what the, the day he's describing. This harbor day that he's describing, a sound of trembling, a no peace. This is the day of the Lord, the day of vengeance he's describing. And further down, he's going to make it plain. 
So he said, uh, I see everybody, uh, I see uh, faces turn into paleness. Next verse, verse 7. Unless for that day, the day he's describing, this day is no peace. I, I'm sensing, I hear no peace. I see fear. No, no, I see trouble. He's still describing this day he see. Alas, for that day that he's describing is great, so that none is like it. It'll never be another day like this, is what he's saying in this chapter. Am I, am I stretching it? Okay, let's keep following the, 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 the mindset. It is great, so that none is like it. Ain't gonna never be another day like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob's trouble in this verse is not talking about Jacob and to go through trouble. Jacob trouble is, according to the context, the trouble coming on those who troubled Jacob. That's what Jacob's trouble is here. My point is, people done taught Jacob's trouble as another seven years Jacob and to go through. And that ain't in the Bible. Well, what about? Okay, so the next, let's read the next statement. We're keeping it all in context. The, the subject is Jacob's trouble. I'm trying to prove nothing in this chapter shows that Jacob is the one in trouble again. All right, next verse, verse 8. For it shall come to pass in that day, the day he's describing, that great day, no day like it. It shall come to pass in that day, said the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck and will burst thy bonds and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. What is that talking about? When he brought, when he gathered Jacob, when he gathered all the 12 tribes, southern and northern tribe, you ain't finna go through no more trouble. I'm finna break the yokes off your neck and everybody that spoil you and everybody that trouble you, you they ain't gonna trouble you no more. Jacob's trouble don't mean Jacob getting ready to go through this trouble. Verse seven. Verse seven. Thank you. Let's keep reading. That's why I'm reading everything in context. My point, keep in mind, I know I'm talking a lot, but don't y'all let me lose y'all. All I'm saying is Jacob's trouble don't mean Jacob's going to be troubled here. But they done taught that like Jacob's trouble is of seven years that we got to go through this big horrible thing. Yeah, Jacob, yeah, Israel going through tribulation, but this ain't what this scripture talking about. Huh? At this time, we done. We done, because he come to rescue Jacob. That's what this talking about. So if you take this subject, Jacob's trouble, and teach it as if there's something coming for us after the tribulation, that's just not true. You just twisted that scripture. It's not for Jacob. Y'all on the same, she's on the same page with me. Y'all on the same page? Yeah. Go ahead. Because we're trying to read this whole chapter in context. When he's saying, right here, oh, I'm sorry. Um, I'm seeing, to bring it more in perspective, mm -hmm. um, where he says, even, he said, alas, for that day is great, mm -hmm. so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. That's what this prophet is seeing and sensing. It's the time of Jacob's trouble. But Jacob's trouble don't mean Jacob's going to be troubled. But he shall be saved out of Jacob's going to be saved out of it. And, and, and what I'm seeing with he, by him saying it is even the time of Jacob's trouble. So he's what, saying that's what he sees. Yeah, and what I'm saying is that Jacob's trouble is the situation for the cause of this great day. <laughs> Thank you. That's it. Well said. Y'all see that? Because we're reading in context, right? Jacob's trouble don't mean Jacob finna be troubled. Right. Jacob already been <laughs> troubled. Jacob done already went through the great tribulation. Yeah. Jacob done went through the tribulation. This ain't, this ain't some tribulation for Jacob. That's what I'm trying to prove when some when they took this out and taught a doctrine, and right. this ain't what that said. Right. Let's finish reading the chapter. Okay. All right? It says, For it shall come to pass in that day, said the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck 
and will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of you. Jacob is free at this time. Yes, Lord. <laughs> All right, Jeremiah 30, verse 9. But they shall serve the Lord thy God and David their king. Jacob getting ready to have David is in reinstalled as their king. Yes. This ain't Jacob going to go through Jacob's trouble. This trouble on those who trouble Jacob. Correct. And let's keep reading. Come on, let the let the chapter stay in context when we say Jacob's trouble. Right. It says, but they shall uh, they shall serve themselves. They shall serve the Lord their God and David their king. <laughs> Whom I will raise up unto them. David ain't raised up. But when he raised up. Jacob ain't got no more trouble to go through. Jacob finished. <laughs> okay. Let's go to verse 10. Therefore feel thou not O my servant Jacob. Okay. If Jacob getting ready to go through this. Hell. Why he's telling me. You ain't got nothing to feel Jacob. Don't make sense to it. Jacob's trouble is not Jacob's getting ready to go through trouble. Jacob's trouble is those people who troubled Jacob. That's my point according to the context of this chapter. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Okay. Look, who are the person who? All right. Ten. Therefore, fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, said the Lord, neither be dismayed, O Israel, all the house of Israel who he's talking to. For lo, I will save you from afar. Same thing he said up top. When he come to save them out of all these nations. He said I will save you from afar. And thy seed from the land of your captivity. Yeah. You coming out of captivity. You coming out of all them tribulations. You coming out of all of it. It's over for you Jacob. It's for his trouble. This ain't Jacob been to go back to another trouble. Jacob's trouble is not Jacob being trouble. <laughs> so he said. And thy seed from the land of their captivity, and Jacob shall return and shall be at rest. How the world Jacob trouble is up? Jacob be in trouble, and Jacob will be resting now. It's not in context with the chapter. Come on. Alicia wanted me to read um, something that was in her Bible. Okay. Um, from from Jeremiah thirty four through seven. Okay. It says immediately after God's proclamation, proclamation of a coming day when fortunes will be restored, there was a word of judgment. The coming day of the Lord is a day of both salvation and judgment. It is going to be a day of glory for some, mm. but one of dire judgment for others. Mm. This is what Jeremiah means by the time of by, by the time what, of Jacob's and trouble. And that's what I'm explaining. It's going to be a glorious day for the Israelites. A horrible day for those who punish the Israelites. Jacob's trouble is not Jacob being troubled. Correct. As like that has been taught for decades. And you can't take you can't take this one verse, talk about Jacob's trouble, and teach it as if it's a trouble for Jacob when the chapter don't say that. Right. Ain't nothing in this chapter that support that. That's why we are exam examining this chapter. As I, this is how false doctrines get taught. People take a phrase out of a chapter and teach a doctrine, and the chapter ain't never said that. Okay? So, I will save you from afar and thy seed from the land of thy captivity, and Jacob shall, uh, shall return and shall be at rest and, and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. This ain't, this ain't Jacob's problem. This is a problem for those who mess with Jacob. <laughs> Let's keep reading, because I don't want to be interpreting this. I want the scripture to interpret it. Let's keep reading. For I am with thee, said the Lord, to save thee. You're going to be saved out of this. I am with thee to save thee. Though I make a full end of all nations. That's the wrath and fury that's coming. It's coming to the nations now. That day of the Lord is for the punishment on the nations. Jacob going to be delivered out of it. Jacob's trouble is over. Jacob's trouble is someone else being troubled. In this chapter. For, uh, verse 11. For I am with thee, said the Lord, to save thee, though I make a full end of all nations, whether I have scattered thee. He was, they were scattered, now they gathered. I have scattered thee, yet will I not make a full end of thee. I ain't going to do this to you, Jacob. Is that what the chapter said? That's what it said. Somebody let me see this. Yes, that's what it said. 
but I will correct thee in measure and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. What is he saying now? I done already punished you, Jacob. That's why I scattered you and whooped your butt all of these years and gave you, sent you through all these tribulations. I done punished you, but Jacob, your time is finished. Now I'm going to take the yoke off your neck and you're going to be at rest. That's what this chapter said. Let's keep reading. Verse 12. For thus said the Lord, thy, thy bruise is incurable. He done whooped us and there's bruises still on us. We still messed up. And so, so all this tribulation we've been through, he said, thy bruise is incurable and thy womb is grievous. You've been wounded, Jacob. You done went through it. And he said, there is none to plead your case that thou mayest be bound up. In other words, healed, that I may heal you and bind you up. Uh, mayest be bound up. Thou has no healing medicine. Ain't nothing out there ever healed you, Jacob. Man, look, this whooping we done been through. Can't nobody heal us but the Father. So he said, all your lovers, every, all these idols y'all went after, all these gods y'all serve, all this stuff y'all did, breaking my covenant. He said, all thy lovers have forsaken thee. They, they seek thee not, for I have wounded thee. I did this to you, Jacob. I scattered you, Jacob. I whooped your butt, Jacob. But now you finna be delivered. I'm finna whoop the butts of them that whoop you. So he said, he said, for all your lovers have forgotten thee. They, they seek thee not. They ain't looking for you now, Jacob. You went after them, but they ain't looking after you. They ain't trying to help you. He said, for I have wounded thee with the wounds of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel run, cruel one, for the multitude of your iniquity because of all your sins and your stiff neck and you breaking my covenant. I done whoop you, Jacob. Because thy sin was increased, why cried thou for affliction? Thy sorrow is incurable for multitude of thy iniquity, because your sin, thy sins were increased. I have done these things to you. That's past tense. Jacob, I'm finna, I'm finna deliver you. Your troubles is past tense. All the stuff you done been through is past tense. He said, I have done all these things to you. That's the great tribulation Jacob just finished. Then it says, it says, therefore all they that devour thee shall be devoured. It's time for me to devour the ones that devoured you. Jacob, you get ready to be delivered out of this. All the scriptures in the chapter confirming what I'm saying. If it's not, speak now if I ever hold you peace. Let's keep going. It said, uh, Therefore all they that devour thee shall be devoured, and all thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. Just like they led you into captivity, every one of them get ready to go into captivity. This is not for Jacob. Jacob is the, this is Jacob's time of deliverance. You asked something? She wanted me to finish. She, you know, she okay, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's basically confirming what you're saying. Confirming. Yeah, so what I had read to add on to that, it says God says he will judge Judah's enemies. Instead That's of, the day of vengeance. Mm -hmm, instead of benefiting from their attack on God's people, they can expect a similar fate. All who devour and slay plunder and prey upon others will be devoured, enslaved, plundered and given as prey. That's what her Bible is saying, mm -hmm. her commentary is saying. Mm -hmm. they accurate. Yeah. They're right. Jacob's trouble is not Jacob being troubled. Mm -hmm. okay. Jacob's trouble is Jacob's enemies being troubled. So that's, that's confirming what we're talking about. Right. And the chapter, y'all see the chapter is confirming it too? Yeah. So how in the world somebody take the phrase Jacob trouble and appoint Jacob to a trouble? Yeah. A time of trouble. When God said this ain't for Jacob. So they contradicting the father in this chapter. Let's keep reading. That's good. Verse 16. We just about done with the chapter and then I'm going to be finished. Therefore all they that devour thee shall be devoured and all thine adversaries every one of them shall go into captivity. And they that spoil thee shall be spoiled. This is not for Jacob. It's not for Jacob. 
And all that pray upon thee, I will give for prey. This is not Jacob. This is Jacob's enemies. Jacob's troubles for Jacob's enemies. <laughs> okay. For I will restore health unto thee. I don't whoop your butt, Jacob. You done been through your tribulation. I'm going to restore you. This is Jacob. Jacob's trouble is Jacob's time to be healed. And it's time to destroy the ones that destroyed Jacob. Jacob's trouble, that term kind of can be misleading. Jacob, the day of Jacob's trouble. As if this trouble for Jacob. That ain't what the chapter says. That's why you got to read. Come on, preachers. I want y'all to deal with this chapter. I'm talking about the preachers that I personally talked to about this. They're talking about Jacob got a trouble to go through. This ain't what that said. Huh? We've been through the trouble. That's what the chapter said. Jacob done been through it. Jacob, it's Jacob's time for healing. That's what this chapter said about Jacob's trouble. I am not making this up. What verse am I on? 17. For I will restore health unto thee. Talking about to Jacob. I will heal thee, thy wounds. Talking to Jacob. Jacob, you done been wounded. I'm going to heal you. Jacob trouble is not Jacob going through trouble. Jacob trouble is the time of healing for Jacob, wrath for Jacob's enemy. That's what the chapter is saying. It says, I will heal thee of thy wound, said the Lord, because they called thee an outcast. They gave you names, by names. Mm -hmm. They said you was an outcast. God done cash all away. But Jacob, this is your time to be restored. I'm going to show everybody I haven't thrown you away. Come on. Right. Thank you, Lord. Because thy sins, uh, where, where, where are you? Where are you? 17. Okay. Um, and heal thee and thy wounds, said the Lord, because they call thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion whom no man seeketh after. In other words, making mockery of us. While we was going through our great tribulation. <laughs> Thus said the Lord. Behold I will bring again. The captivity of Jacob. He keep repeating himself what he's doing for Jacob. I will bring again. The captivity of Jacob's tents. And have mercy. On his dwelling place. This ain't no Jacob having trouble. The whole chapter. Confirming this ain't for Jacob's trouble. Ain't for Jacob. Jacob trouble is for somebody else. And have mercy upon his dwelling places. And the city shall be built upon her own heap. And the palace shall remain after the manner thereof. And out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and a voice of them that make merry. Jacob's going to be merry. That don't sound like unhappy people. Which, if you go, if you get ready to go through another great tribulation, after all these tribulations you've been through, what you making merry for? I need to have you checked. <laughs> <laughs> and I will multiply them, and they sh shall not be few. I will also glorify them. <laughs> and they shall not be small. Hmm? Verse 20. Their children also shall be as a four time and their congregation shall be established before me and I will punish all that oppress them. Uh -huh. Jacob's trouble is not Jacob's being going through trouble. It's the ones that oppress Jacob's that's going to go through Jacob's trouble. According to the chapter. Is obvious, and their nobles shall be them be of themselves be of themselves, and their governors shall proceed from the midst of them. And I will cause him to draw near, and he shall approach unto me. For who is this that engage his heart to approach unto me? Said the Lord. Who in the world out of the nation think they can bypass Jacob and approach to me? Everybody going to come through Jacob. Hallelujah. 
Because Jacob, the Israelites, are the priests of the nation. I done whooped their butts. They done went through a great tribulation. Now I'm healing them and restoring them, setting them back in place. Now who got the nerve to approach me without Jacob? That's what this scripture talking about. And you shall be my people. He's still talking about Jacob, the Israelites. And I will be your God. Behold, the whirlwind of the Lord goeth forth with fury. The fury is for Jacob's enemies. He keep reiterating that all through the chapter. Behold, the whirlwind of the Lord goeth forth with fury and continuing whirlwind. It shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked, not Jacob. Look at that. The fierce anger of the Lord shall not return. He said, I'm going to be angry with them forever. That's Esau, the wicked. He said, the fierce anger of the Lord shall not return until he have done it and until he have performed the intents of his heart in the latter days. You shall consider this. Mm -hmm. Jacob's trouble is not Jacob going through trouble. That has been taught wrong. Disprove this chapter, and then I'll hear you. Clap your hands and praise the Lord. <laughs> Nothing in that chapter says that this is Jacob and you're going to go through some tribulation after they get out of the tribulation. So that's been taught wrong. So I'm finished, uh, and we can uh, turn it over. To, we're going to let the other close out tonight. Thank God for David. We pray for him. I show sure miss him, but let him recover uh, greatly. Amen. So Elder, I'm Elder, going to take the offering and. Say the last words and uh, anybody else got anything to share? Okay, thanks God for those on Facebook. Amen. We stick in with the Bible. Hallelujah. Amen. Not doctrines that have been taught by men. God bless you.